Summer Lynn from Chicago, Illinois. Just wanted to give a huge shout out to the Relay for all the love and support they've given my team and I. And make sure you stay tuned for all the latest boxing news. Welcome to the motherfucking Relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Ow! Okay, we'll start with this. Well, it looks like there's set to be trouble in paradise. That's right. Well-known fixture in boxing, Rick Glacier. Glacier. Quoted as saying, looks like Dana White has a real disdain for Stefan Espinoza. Hashtag Showtime announces Tank Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz on October 24th on pay-per-view. And Dana counters for the same night, Khabib versus Gaethy on pay-per-view. Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz wasn't going to do well on pay-per-view anyways. But now, just got a whole lot worse. The severity of this situation, the gravity of it, cannot be understated. A lot of time, a lot of effort has gone into trying to make Javante Davis a pay-per-view attraction, a pay-per-view star, and this is set to be his pay-per-view debut. And in that debut, he's supposed to be going head-to-head -head with a UFC card, a UFC card that features Khabib. And Justin Gaethy. This will be Khabib's first fight since the Poirier fight and since having lost his dad a few weeks ago. I don't think it's far-fetched at all to say that Khabib has more fans and more of a following than Javante Davis does. It's not. So if these two pay-per-views are set to go head-to-head, -head, bad news. No likelihood it will be UFC that wins the day. And I'm not happy to hear that as a boxing fan. I'm not. But rest assured... That's what's going to happen. That is the truth of it. There is more of a organic grassroots movement to see Khabib versus Gaethy than there is Davis versus Santa Cruz. As no one in boxing was asking for Davis versus Santa Cruz. There were fights that they were asking for from the both of these fighters. But the PBC, in their fashion, ignored the cries, the outcries of the boxing fans and tried to convince them that this is what they want to see. And therein lies the dilemma. Therein lies the problem. I'm not buying this fucking fight. I don't know if you guys are, but I'm not. I'll purchase that Charlo doubleheader that features Jermel Charlo unifying titles with Jason Rosario and Jermel Charlo fighting Sergei Kirivyanchenko. I'm all set to purchase that. And if Teofimo Lopez versus Vasil Lomachenko goes down in early October, I'll purchase that as well. But this... Ah, fuck this. Call it karma for trying to hoodwink the boxing fans into thinking that this fighter is better than what he is, is more than he appears. Call it karma. Call it bad business. That the PBC effectively ignored the demands of the boxing community and tried to fabricate one. Pretty much. By putting on this Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz fight, you're not putting on a fight that the fight fans were asking you for. You're not putting on a fight, a spectacle that the fight fans want to see. You're spending a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of energy in pretending that this is what people want to see. Pretending that someone asked you for this. And as a result of that, your bubble is about to burst. I didn't know how good this pay-per-view would or would do if they so decided to go ahead with it. But given the price tag and the lack of enthusiasm over this fight, I didn't imagine and still don't imagine it would do very many buys. It won't. I I'd be surprised if this thing could bring in 350000 And that was before they announced Gaethy versus Khabib. No, it's going to be that much harder to get a combat sports aficionado's attention with this card because, one... Even the boxing fans weren't excited about this thing. And even the boxing fans, many of them, aren't fans of Javante Davis. Many of the boxing fans aren't fans of how his career is being handled. What fights he didn't have so that you could try to sell us this fucking shit? Fuck out of here. I'm gonna tell you something. It's not that a boxing match, as a spectacle, cannot compete with the UFC and their cards as a spectacle. Both the Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin fights brought in a million pay-per-view buys. The Canelo vs. Cotto fight, that brought in just under a million pay-per-view buys. The same applies for the Deontay Wilder vs. Tyson Fury rematch. I guess that the difference between those pay-per-views and this Davis vs. Leo Santa Cruz pay-per-view is that there was actually a demand for some of, if not all of, those fights. There was a genuine interest from the fans. Intrigue in seeing what was going to happen 
in those fights. Can't fake an interest. It was organic. It wasn't fabricated. It wasn't staged. It wasn't Leonard Ellerby trying to convince you that those fights were better than what they were or that Javante Davis is a pay-per-view star even though he's never actually been on pay-per-view and this is set to be his pay-per-view debut. Wasn't any of that dumb shit. There was genuine interest in seeing Miguel Cotto lock horns with Canelo Alvarez. Both the Puerto Rican and Mexican fans. That rivalry, that age-old rivalry in boxing. There was genuine interest in seeing Canelo Alvarez fight Gennady Golovkin. Not just once, but twice. The sentiment was an organic sentiment. A real sentiment based on a real demand. Hell, even Wilder versus Fury 2 had a demand. At least more than Davis versus Santa Cruz. Who was demanding to see that shit? The biggest problem that the PBC is facing when trying to mass produce these pay per view attractions, these pay per view stars, as they were, is that they keep attempting to skip steps. They keep ignoring the boxing fans and what the boxing fans want to see. And as a result of that, you get a lot of fight fans that aren't fans of your fighter, of your fighters. So you are putting a cap on just how successful your cards can be. And the chickens come home to roost. You can't fool people into thinking they want to see this. And that will be reflected in the numbers, folks. That will be reflected in the pay-per-view buys and how many people don't buy this pay-per-view. The fight fans wanted to see Javante Davis fight Vasil Lomachenko and you sat on that for three fucking years. Three going on four now. The fight fans wanted to see Javante Davis unify titles with Tevin Farmer and you deprived the fight fans of that as well so that you could try to use lukewarm Leo as a platform for Javante Davis to be launched in a pay-per-view stardom? People don't like Leo Santa Cruz that much to begin with, much less Javante Davis. Try and understand that I'm not telling you that in 2017 or even 2018, Vasil Lomachenko versus Javante Davis was a pay-per-view fight, a pay-per-view event. I question how well that fight would have done in the pay-per-view market then, but that's the kind of legwork you have to put in in order to produce a pay-per-view star, a pay-per-view attraction. Those are the kind of fights that you need to have so that you can win over the hearts and minds of the boxing fans. So when that time does come for you to debut on pay-per-view, they're already there with you. And for Davis, that's not the case. He's been fighting stiffs for the last two, three years. Nobody's been excited about anything this kid's been doing. You guys have been elated with what mediocre success he's had so far. Oh, he sold a couple of tickets in his hometown. Oh, he sold some cheap seats down there in Atlanta. whoop de doo Whilst continuing to ignore what the fight fans want to see from this fighter, whilst continuing to ignore the demand that is actually there from the paying public. But you're expecting us to pay for this. And all on the night of Khabib versus Gaethy. You don't have to question how the UFC's been doing. The UFC, which I'm not a fan of, but make no mistake, the numbers are what the numbers are, and the numbers don't lie. Dana White hasn't been struggling to sell those cards of his. Even during this fucking pandemic. And as a longtime boxing fan, I have to concede that you can't afford to go head to head against one of his cards with this bullshit. You can't do it. It won't work. It simply won't do. You can have Javante Davis making several appearances leading up to the fight on several podcasts, asserting that he's the cash cow. He's a pay-per-view star, anywhere from 130 to 135. You can have him do that till he's blue in the face. You can have Leonard Ellerby spamming tweets about how Javante Davis is a pay-per-view star. Yeah, we're about to find out how much of a star he is or how much of a star he ain't. Because I'll tell you what, if he really is a star, if he really were one, it wouldn't matter what the hell Dana White's got going on the night of the fight because Javante Davis would already have his own set of fans that pay to see him. Him specifically. If he were really a star. If he were really an attraction of some kind, it wouldn't matter what Dana White or anybody else has going on the night of one of his fights because he'd be a star. You already have your fans, your paying public. This is embarrassing. It's bittersweet, as I've long been critical of how Javante Davis's career is being managed, how he's being protected from most every formidable fighter at 130 to 135 pounds. And I'm relishing the opportunity to see them fall flat on their faces for trying to hoodwink the boxing fans into thinking that this fighter is something that he isn't. But it's bittersweet also because I'm a boxing fan and I want the sport to do well. I want the sport to thrive. 
and the sport itself is set to be given a black eye by mixed martial arts on October 24th when these two cards go head to head. I don't even think this is a contest. That Khabib versus Gaethy card in all likelihood is going to get something like a million pay-per-view buys and this Davis versus Santa Cruz fight isn't going to even be an afterthought. It's not even going to be a blip on the radar for a lot of people. It's embarrassing as a boxing fan, but that's because these guys are an embarrassment. These are our ambassadors of the American boxing scene. Some of them, not all. There still are hungry young fighters out there. True blue competitors that have everything it takes to put boxing on their shoulders and carry it successfully into the next generation. There are still those kinds of fighters floating around. But Javante Davis, and I've been telling you this for a long time, he ain't one of them. Moving on, per a tweet from Michael Benson. The Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. exhibition fight will cost $49.99 on pay-per-view September 12th. This is a reduced price from what a pay-per-view normally costs you these days. Normally, it's a little closer to $100 for a pay-per-view fight. But as we all know, this is a match that won't actually have an outcome unless somebody decides to knock out somebody else. Because it's an exhibition match. There ain't no judges. It's not going to have an actual impact on either of these two legendary fighters' is pro records. It's an exhibition match. And I just wonder, even with the name of a Mike Tyson, even with the name of a Roy Jones Jr., even with a popular YouTuber and a basketball player, how many pay-per-view buys can you sell at 49 roughly $50? How many pay-per-view buys can you sell for an exhibition match that doesn't have an outcome? I'll tell you what I think. I'll tell you what I think. I think that this Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. exhibition match might just sell more pay-per-view buys than the Leo Santa Cruz versus Javante Davis fight we just talked about because one, everybody knows Mike. Everybody loves Mike and everybody knows Roy and they love him too. They just so happen to have a very popular YouTube YouTuber. participating on the undercard against a retired basketball player. There's that to consider. The novelty act. The circus angle. But the circus angle that might just help them sell this thing. There's that. That you have the celebrity of Mike Tyson. One of the most iconic boxers to ever lace the gloves up. Against Roy Jones Jr. One of the living legends. You got that. But just as well, this card doesn't have to compete with a UFC card. The way the Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz card has to compete with a UFC card. These guys don't have that problem. I don't know that I myself will purchase this card. Oh, I might. It's only $50 a pop. And, you know, it reminds me of something that I said earlier this week. That imagine you're at a cookout. Boxing. A lot of retired boxes there. Big names. Legends. And, you know, Uncle Mike decides he wants to throw hands with Uncle Roy. Wouldn't you want to see that? Wouldn't you want to see that? Even for 10 seconds before, you know, everybody comes in and breaks it up. I'd want to see that. And that's more or less the kind of appeal that this exhibition match has. That, yes, there's not a world title on the line. And, and, and yes, these guys are well past their prime. It's still Mike Tyson. And it's still Roy Jones Jr. I'll tell you. I'm going to support this thing. I think I will. And I'm going to support it because of what I'm not going to be supporting in the near future. I'm a big fan of the sport of boxing. Always have been. Always will be. And I can support Mike and Roy in their twilight years more than I can support Javante Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz. Those two guys won't be getting my money. But Mike and Roy... They will. They've more than earned it. So I actually think I'm going to be purchasing this exhibition match. And my expectations are low. I'm not expecting to see any earth-shattering punches or anything like that. I'm supporting these two guys. On the strength of what they've already done for the sport. It's only $50. What's $50? That's nothing. I reiterate, I don't have any illusions about this thing. It's not a true blue David and Goliath situation. I'm just supporting two guys who I've been supporting for a very long time. So I think I'll be buying this thing. Just reminds my thoughts. I don't really know what this exhibition match will bring in. I don't know that this thing can or can't do a million pay-per-view buys because, yes, it's Mike and Roy, but also it's an exhibition match. There's that. But I'm not sure what exactly it will do, but a part of me is fairly confident that whatever it does, it might just be more than what the Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz pay-per-view will do. Because this fight, unlike that fight, involves two living legends, involves two bona fide pay-per-view attractions, and this fight, unlike that fight, doesn't have to compete with a UFC card happening at the same time. 
In other news, per a tweet from Michael Benson, Bob Arum has revealed that he is trying to make Manny Pacquiao versus Terrence Crawford for November 14th or the 21st. He said he's had discussions with potential investors who may pay a significant site fee to stage the fight in their country. But nothing is concrete yet. And I maintain my original skepticism when it comes to this potential Crawford Pacquiao fight because not only is Bob a little bit on the wishy-washy side, you know, not too long ago he was saying that he wouldn't make the fight between Manny and Crawford even if he could for fear of Manny's help. Right. Whereas now he's saying all systems are a go and he's looking for investors. Right. There's that to consider, but there's also that all the talk that we've been hearing about this fight potentially happening has been coming from the top rank Bob Arum side of things. I've seen nothing from Manny, nothing from Sean Gibbons, nothing from Freddie Roach, nothing from Boo Boy Fernandez that indicates Terrence Crawford is set to be his next opponent. I've seen absolutely nothing. And until I do, we don't know that both parties are on the same boat. And both parties have to be, because it takes two to tango. And you know that World Boxing News earlier this week printed an article that stated that Manny might not fight at all this year, that he might not fight the whole year of 2020, because he's got other obligations. I mean, did you guys forget? This guy is a senator in his own country. He's got other responsibilities, and his schedule has been so delayed, more delayed than your average professional boxer, because your average professional boxer isn't juggling boxing with a political career. I'd be happy to be wrong about this thing. I'd be happy if Manny Pacquiao so decided to take on the fight that none of those PBC guys seem to want. It's a great fucking fight. It's a fight between two world champions in the welterweight division, the old lion versus the young lion. Both of these guys just so happen to be ranked on the ring IQ pound for pound list for those that follow it. But I maintain my original skepticism, I maintain my original position that it's going to take more than just talk from Bob Arum to convince me that this fight is a realistic proposition. It's going to take more than just optimistic talk from Bob Arum to convince me that this is going to happen. I.e., it's going to take confirmation from Manny.